So this command that I'm going to teach you is one that I use a lot when I need to mark out the footprint of a building, especially if it's one that I know what the dimensions are and the dimensions have to be a particular amount. So for example, uh, this works really well if you're scaling up a build. If your original build is 10 blocks long, then you know that scaling up, you want it to be 30 blocks long. So this is where this can really come in handy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk you through this. We're going to open up the code builder by pushing C and I've used code builder a lot. Usually what you'll see when you open it the first time is it will ask you what kind of coding language you want to use. You want to use make code. That's the block based language. This is going to be your home page and you're going to go to new project and we're going to call this project uh, laying a foundation. So create. So we're going to start with chat commands. So this means that when I type this word into the chat, it's going to do whatever I put in between these two blocks. So we'll call this uh, scale one. And I'm not going to put a space in there uh, because that can confuse the code builder. So you want it to be just a single word in there, whatever it's going to be for you. You could call it breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as long as you know what each of those are going to be doing. So scale one helps me because I know this is going to be the first wall I'm laying at scale. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the agent blocks and I'm going to pull out my agent teleport too. So I am actually standing where I want the first corner to be. So I've actually marked it out with pink concrete powder because pink is nice and bright and it stands out against the terrain. And I want my agent to go this way. So if I move, it tells me, you can see the coordinates changing up at the top. It's getting closer to zero, which means that number is going up. So I'm getting closer to positive Z. So this is the way I want my agent to be facing, positive Z. And you can actually test this out. So what I want my agent to do, if I go back into Code Builder, I want my agent to spawn about 10 blocks above me because I can see that the terrain up ahead goes up higher and I don't want my agent to crash into it because that's gonna mess up the code. So we can just test this out. So this is telling it that I want my agent 10 blocks above me. That's what the squiggly means. The squiggly means in relation to where I am standing. So the x-axis goes uh, kind of left, right on my screen along the ground. The z-axis goes forward and backward along the ground. And the y-axis goes up and down in the air. So I want my agent to be zero blocks away from me on the x-axis and zero blocks away from me on the z-axis, so where I'm standing, but 10 blocks above me. And I just want to check and make sure that I'm going to have the agent in the right direction. So I want it facing in the direction of positive z, I want it facing south. We can test this by pushing on the start button and if I push enter to open up my chat and I'm going to put in scale one. There we go. My agent is facing in the right direction. Perfect. I can continue my code. So next, what I want to happen is I want my agent to drop these concrete blocks. And this is why I'm using pink concrete powder because it has gravity. So my agent can move along that axis and it's not gonna be placing blocks in the sky. It's gonna be dropping them and it's gonna conform with the terrain. And you'll see what I mean when I run it. But to do that, I need to give my agent those blocks. So I'm gonna to go to my agent inventory. And I'm gonna set it to pink concrete powder. So there it is. And I'm gonna do the maximum amount. Now, if your count is gonna be higher than 64, you will need to add additional lines of code in there to make sure that the agent has enough. But since we're staying below it for this one, I don't need to worry about that. So agent set blocker item 64, cool. Now, what I want my agent to do is I want it to drop a block of concrete powder and move forward. And I want my agent to do that 45 times because I want this block, uh, this wall to be 45 blocks long. I want it to mark out that distance for me. Oh, it's getting dark. I'm going to fix that. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to grab a loop 
because rather than put in drop a block, move forward, drop a block, move forward, drop a block, move forward 45 times, it's much faster if I get it to repeat it. So instead of 45, I'm actually going to put in 44 because I want my agent to stop while it is still over that final block. I don't want it to move forward past the final wall. So I'm going to put in 44 times and then I'm going to have the agent drop the block by placing it below itself and then I want my agent to move forward one space. So this repeat loop is saying the agent's going to drop a block and move forward and then it's going to do that 44 times. So now I have 44 blocks in I'm going to duplicate this one because all I want to do at the end, after it's repeated that 44 times, is place the final block down, but don't move forward. Okay, so this code is telling us the agent's going to spawn in 10 blocks above me. It's going to fill up its inventory with concrete powder. It's going to drop concrete powder 45 times, 44 plus 1, and then it's going to stop. So if I run the code, scale 1. And there it goes. So what my agent is doing is it's laying out this footprint for me in the exact number of blocks that I want. I don't have to count it out myself and worry about miscounting. It's all there. So now let's say I want my agent to do another wall. Well, I can just modify the code. So I need to make sure that I'm standing on this block uh, because that is part of our code. We could do it with specific coordinates, but we're not doing it that way. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to duplicate this whole code. So I'm going to right click, duplicate. And you see how it's grayed out? We can't have the same code. So now I'm going to go scale two. There we go. It's not grayed out anymore. It's going to do what I want. Now I want it to go this way. So I'm going to check the direction. I'm going to look at my coordinates. All right, so we are facing east. We're facing toward positive x. So again, making sure I'm on this block. I'm going to open up my code. Scale 2, facing east, positive x. I'm going to do the same thing, but let's say this time I want this to be um, 50 blocks. So I'm going to put 49 plus 1 and we're less than 64, so we're still okay. So we're gonna run this code, and we're gonna type in scale two and see what happens. And there he goes. And we might run into some trouble with the lava, but that's okay. All right. Now, it is okay that the agent is uh, above the lava because we can actually fix that. We can make sure that our coordinates match the agents and we're in creative mode so lava doesn't hurt us. So our coordinates match the agents and we're just gonna lay down this concrete. There we go. So that's the end of our line right there and we can stand on it and we can finish the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate scale 1 because it's recreating that first wall. This is going to be scale 3. Except instead of going south, we're going to have it go back in the opposite direction. And then we can, while we are here, do scale 4 as well. So I'm going to duplicate that, scale 4, and change the direction to west. All right. So now I'm going to run scale three. And I'm going to follow the agent and I'm going to stand on the last block that it's on, recreate scale four. So remember, scales three and scale four are just the same code that we had for the first two walls, but going in opposite directions. So scale four. And there, if we lift up, our agent will have completed this footprint for us, but 
in exactly the dimensions that we want. So this is a handy little code that is really useful for helping us lay out footprints of really large buildings.